Welcome to worship. My name is Chaplain Eric, and today I'm being assisted by Chaplain Rowe. We're chaplains at Wesley Mission, Queensland. We light the Christ candle. Christ is the light of the world, and in him there is no darkness. We acknowledge the traditional owners of the land on which we worship, paying respects to leaders past and present. They cared for this land for thousands of years, and we are the beneficiaries. Our call to worship. Without your presence, Darkness fills our thoughts. Help us to know that we will never be abandoned by you. We praise you, O God. Deliver us from darkness to light, from death to light. Remembering your great mercy, we lift up our voices to you in songs of endless praise. Let us enjoy the gift of music as we sing together the hymn, Holy, Holy, Holy.
prayer of invocation, adoration. We acknowledge, O oh God, that we are part of your world. We forget that rather than hiding your face, you have revealed it in Jesus. Rather than abandoning us to all the destructive powers of evil, you chose to confront the power of evil by sharing our humanity and our suffering in and through the sacrificial love of Jesus. Through his love, lives previously overwhelmed by the fear of death and darkness have been enlightened forever. God of grace and mercy, we pray as we worship you today that our lives be transformed by the light and life of Christ and renewed by the power of the Holy Spirit so that we praise and glorify you not only in words but in deeds of love and mercy performed in Christ's name and for his sake. Amen. And our prayer of confession today. Gracious and merciful God, over and over again, you challenge us to risk becoming the people you know we can become with your love and Jesus' life within us. Merciful God, forgive us when our conduct fails to measure up to the demands of the gospel and we use our gifts to further our own ambitions rather than building others up. Merciful God, forgive us when our lack of a strong Christian witness contributes to the ease with which many people are drawn into worshipping the gods of sport and wealth. God of grace and mercy, help us to empty ourselves of habits which are destructive to ourselves and others so that we can be filled with the selfless life of Jesus Christ, in whose name we pray. Amen. The good news is this, we are no longer under law, but under God's grace. Paul writes that the wages of sin is death, but the free gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord, through whom we are freed from sin and brought from death to life. In Christ our, son, our sins are forgiven. Thanks be to God. And now please join with me in singing Guide me, O thou great Jehovah.
Today's Gospel comes from Matthew, chapter 10, verse 40 to 42. Whoever welcomes you welcomes me, and whoever welcomes me welcomes the one who sent me. Whoever welcomes a prophet in the name of a prophet will receive a prophet's reward. And whoever welcomes a righteous person in the name of a righteous person will receive the reward of the righteous. And whoever gives even a cup of cold water to one of these little ones in the name of a disciple, truly I tell you, none of these will lose their reward. And this is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Let us continue worship in prayer. Let us pray. Lord God, this day may my words be acceptable to you. May there be more of you and less of me today. Amen. Many Old Testament writers have written about the Israelite nation as a nation called to remember they had been strangers in the land of Egypt and God had delivered them, a miracle witnessed by thousands. Therefore, they are to respond by showing concern and care to the stranger. Limbird's book, The Prophets and the Powerless, draws attention to some important themes in the Old Testament. The three R's. People are constantly reminded, reminded about what God has done for them. Principally, God has entered into relationship with them, a relationship with them, both in which they are to respond with a particular response a response that means a lifestyle marked with a certain attitude towards God and a certain attitude towards each other. We have a short reading today, and yet this message is also present. These themes are present. Christians are reminded of the good news the foundation of new life. This is what God has done through the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ. Christians enjoy a special relationship with God as people who now are part of a new covenant, a new covenant inaugurated by Christ our Lord and Saviour. And the people of God are expected to respond to what God has done, to love God and our neighbour. Jesus is teaching us in these few verses the cost and meaning of discipleship. And now he sends his disciples out, telling them, go, welcome, welcome each other with hospitality. Hospitality is of interest to me. Growing up, I was part of a family that was able to offer hospitality to many, friends and parents and, and neighbours who otherwise would, had been by themselves. I have a recollection of Sunday school of a large poster of Jesus surrounded by children from every country. It was like this was the new family one family, children of one creator God. I think, it's all, I think we always knew that this was our response, our God-given response to be fully human, was to be fully hospitable. Our Christian faith emphasizes this over and over again. We remember the Good Samaritan, which concludes with Jesus asking the teacher of law the question, who acted like a neighbour towards the men attacked by robbers? The obvious response 
the law giver, the lawmaker, said this to Jesus. The one who was kind to the person being attacked. Jesus re replied, you go then and do the same. I believe church growth can be linked directly with hospitality. In the book of Acts and in so many parts of the letters in the New Testament, we see that hospitality was part of what it was to be a follower of the way, a follower of Christ. And it's so important today. It's so important that people feel welcomed at the entrance of a church. Church is where we gather to worship and glorify God. It's a community, it's a special time. Special things happen when we gather as one people to worship God. If people come into church and feel welcomed, feel accepted by the people of God, maybe they might just begin to believe they are accepted by God. It is so important when people are feeling like the world has passed them by that we notice them. Exercise discipleship by simply sharing ourselves. What about that after worship cup of tea or coffee? Don't devalue that humble cup of tea or coffee after worship, in each other's homes, in our facilities, in our courts, where we gather, we are reaching out in Christ's name. And as Matthew 25 records, Jesus said, for I was hungry and you gave me something to eat. I was thirsty and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger, you welcomed me in. Whatever you do to the least of my brethren, you do for me. So we, we who are members of Christ's body, his hands and feet, are encouraged to exercise hospitality. That should be our attitude. It's expressed by sharing what we have using our hands, our minds, our mouths, our hearts, as Jesus would have them used, that we might love another even as he loves us. Amen. Let us continue to enjoy the gift of music as we sing the hymn, Be Thou My Vision. Bye. 
the prayers of the people. We pray for all who are involved in mission. Lord, keep them in your love. For those who speak freedom in places of oppression, Lord, keep them in your love. For those who offer hospitality, even in war-torn countries, Lord, keep them in your love. We remember those too who are nearer to home, reaching out to the communities around them. And we pray that we might be a church of mission, that each of us might be a missionary in our neighbourhood or court or facility. Lord, you know each of us and we are precious in your sight. Remember us as we do your work in the world. Lord, keep us in your love. Amen. And now let us pray to the Father in the words our Saviour gave us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. And now please join in the singing of Trust and Obey.
word of mission and blessing. Go and do the Lord's commands. Do the work of Jesus' hands. And may your faith be active, may your hope be active, and may your love be active. The blessing of God Almighty, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you always. Amen.